Hi guys, I'm just going to make a video of what we covered in class about how to erase uh, things on a video uh, using Photoshop. I wanted to uh, just reinforce what we uh, captured in class. Here is our stop motion uh, with our ball bouncing, uh, 20 frame animation uh, taken at 1920 by 1080, uh, in other words, uh, high definition. And what we're going to be doing is removing the wire from this animation. Uh, and so what we're going to do so we're going to open up Photoshop and we're going to go to Windows, Workspace, and make sure that we are in our Motion Workspace. If you're not, you can select it here or just hit Reset Motion and it'll set everything back up. Um, we're going to start with a new document uh, and we're going to go to our Film and Video and make sure that we're working with a 1920 by 1080 uh, P document. It's going to give us this. Uh, in class, we went to the view menu to clear the guides so we don't have to see them. Uh, notice we have a black, uh, white black background uh, that's locked. And what we did in class went to layers, video layers, new blank video layer. And that gave us a blank video layer that we could actually draw on and uh, set everything up for. When we did this, we also noticed our blue uh, video layer down here that has nothing on it. Uh, we went to our little hamburger menu here and we uh, set up our timeline frame rate, which is really important, and we set that to 12. We also enabled um, uh, some of the other features here like um, timeline uh, shortcut keys so that we could use the left and right arrow keys, as you can see right here, just to go back and forth with our arrow keys on the timeline. The next thing we did was import the actual video. So we went to Layers, Video Layers, and this time we selected New Video from File, and we brought in our actual stop motion uh, animation that we did in class. And you can kind of see it right here, and if we hit the play button, it'll play all the way through, and then it'll go to the blank layer that we see here, and it'll go all the way out to five seconds, and then loop. Uh, we had to set our loop to be enabled uh, right here under Loop Playback. Um, but it should be enabled now for you. And you can see that when I run my scrubber over here, we took some photos at the beginning and at the end of nothing happening so that we'd have something that we could erase into. So what we did is we duplicated our video layer. I'm going to go ahead and call this video. Hit return. And now I'm going to duplicate it by clicking on the word video and selecting duplicate layer. This is just like we do in uh, Premiere. And we're going to call it video copy, and I'm going to call this background uh, still. Because we're going to turn whatever we're looking at into a still image. We move the playhead to where we want actually to be. Like if we wanted this as our still image, we would use this. But we're actually going to move back here, and this is going to be our still image. Let's double check to make sure that is in fact the case. Oh, just messed up my workspace, so I'm going to reset it. Here we go. So let's see, and you can kind of see a little bit of movement here with shadows, and not just because the people were in the frame. And I'm going to see back here, yeah, I think this right here is the best photo for what we're going to need. So I'm under the background still layer. Notice how you can change the layers just by clicking on them. Back here, and I'm going to right click, and this time instead of duplicate, I'm going to actually rasterize. That will turn this into a physical like photograph that doesn't change. As you can see, now I'm moving it. And because it's on top, I can't see through it. If I use the eyeball tool, I can actually see the next video below it because I turned it off. On, off, on, off. Anyway, we're going to move this underneath our video layer. So now we have a background. So if I turn the video on and off, you can see that layer is hidden. And it doesn't look like too much has changed in this frame. The next thing we did was set our loop points. So we actually trimmed our edges here. So we start here with the ball. And so I moved my little playhead, the beginning playhead here. And then the other playhead's way out here. And I moved that in to wherever the ball hits the ground right there. Uh, I didn't want to go too, far, too much farther. So that's right it. And then I hit the, the play button to play it to make sure that looks like it's link, it's bouncing without anything, you know, like the ball disappearing or something weird. Okay, looks good. So now I'm gonna move to my first frame and I'm gonna use my arrow key, nope, arrow, arrow. Okay, this is the first frame that I need to erase the wire. 
Now I have to select my video layer in order for this to work, so I have to be on the video layer, right? And then I have to use the eraser tool, E for eraser, right here. Uh, and then what we did was we modified the hardness to be about 30, and for me the size I'm going to make around 76. And now if I wanted to, I could just erase the video that's currently there. And you'll notice it's a little darker, and that's okay, we're just going to have to deal with it. And then to zoom in, Command Plus allows us to zoom. Uh, spacebar allows us to, holding the spacebar key while we're out using the mouse allows us to move around like this. And so this allows us to now modify our brush size so we can be a little bit more accurate. And you'll notice, obviously, you want to also get rid of the <coughs> wire shadow. I'm just going to get rid of it here just because it's just going to be how it is. Okay, so that's one frame. Go to the next frame and you'll do the same thing. You just go through and erase the wire, making sure you get most of it. And again, my brush is somewhat soft. Remember, that's like the softness under here. And make the size a little bigger so I'm not spending all day. I'm going to use the bracket keys to make the brush even bigger, like without having to go up there. And you can kind of see. And so I get rid of most of the stuff and then a smaller gets just that. And that's it. And then I'll go to the next frame and I'll continue to do this until all the frames. And again, I'm just using the bracket key to get most of this really fast. And using the space bar to like get myself up there. And then when I need to get a little more detail, I make the brush smaller with the bracket keys. And there we go. And then another one. And you get the idea. So we'll just, just actually, I'm just going to make the bracket keys really big at this point and just just do a really bad job so you don't have to watch me do this the whole video because you get the idea right this is the the bad way to do it and again you want to kind of be careful i'm not being careful but i'm just saying you could be careful because you're not trying to do this for uh, people in a video and obviously I messed up. If you mess up, Command Z will allow you to undo stuff. And here's what we've got so far. And you can kind of see uh, Command Zero to zoom out and Command Minus uh, zooming out. Got most of it. Obviously could have done a better job. Notice it's a little bit darker uh, than it should be. So in class, we selected our background. And you can see it's just a hole. Like if I turn everything below off, you can see there's just a hole in the video. Uh, anyway, I turned the background still on and selected it, and what we did in class was went to Image, Adjustment, Brightness, Contrast, and then what we did was we increased the brightness so that that kind of worked better. It seemed like it, it, it fixed it a little bit, not perfect, but it is much better, as you can kind of see if I had done a good job. Okay, we know that our loop points are set perfectly. It looks like it's bouncing just fine. So what we're going to do is now export this. So we're going to go to File, Export Video. And in class, what was really important was Adobe Media Encoder H.264. By default, it's on QuickTime, so make sure that's off. Uh, we need to know where we're putting it. In this case, I'm just going to call it Ball. And I'm putting it on the desktop. And then this is also very important. The range was work area. F frame number 3 to 12, that's this one to this one. Uh, if we do the entire thing, it's going to do all the frames, all five seconds of frames. Okay, everything else looks correct, and we hit render. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, ball, and that's saving as a Photoshop file, so if I ever need to go back, I have this entire layer with the ball and a bunch of other stuff in it. Um, so you can always go back and, and refix something or add something in. Okay, that's all for Photoshop. So now we're going to take a look at our ball... Uh, video here and it looks like this and obviously it doesn't loop it seems like it stops right here but remember when we turn on uh, looping uh, on any of the videos that we're on it will feel like it's looping and in Premiere it'll look even there won't even be a pause here it'll just kind of go through and loop okay hope that hope that helps